Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I'm going to be talking about how to use synchronicity for inner growth. Alright, so last week I made a video all about synchronicity and that video was a very thorough explanation of what synchronicity is and all that it entails, but I didn't add much of a how-to section to it, you know, that really goes in depth with how to use synchronicity for inner work. I wanted to save that for its own video and this is that video. So synchronicity is basically when something happens in the external experience, in the external landscape that coincides with something of the internal landscape and it happens in a way that is non-causal which means that you didn't do anything in particular to make that happen and it's also not just in the realm of pure chance. Now the person who coined the term synchronicity was Carl Jung who basically said that synchronicity is kind of like a reflection of the internal state quite a lot of the time and when synchronicities happen in this way they're meant to pull our attention inward toward something that we may not realize about ourselves or something that may need to be integrated and synchronicities often happen through the lens of archetypal language which are common symbols or patterns that can be recognized across cultures as having a common meaning. So for example, if we find that we're having reoccurring dreams about large bodies of water and we find that, you know, maybe there are tsunamis in our dreams or we're drowning in our dreams or we get eaten by a sea monster in our dreams, these have a common meaning in terms of water often representing the emotional state. And so these dreams can sort of pull our attention inward if we can read those archetypal symbols for what they are and alert us to maybe some issues we're having that we may not realize relative to the emotions. Or if we experience that synchronicity out in daily life, like for example, if we keep seeing horses everywhere and like in various different contexts that are beyond just pure chance, like let's say that somebody is wearing a horse on their shirt and you're sitting next to them and then all of a sudden you go to class and you know they're talking about horses and then you end up like walking into um, a place and they have like this big equestrian statue there and it just horses keep coming up over and over again, then it would be a good idea to look at that horse as an archetypal symbol and say, well, what have horses represented, archetypally speaking, throughout the course of human history? And then using that symbolic meaning, be able to use that as a lens to look inward in order to perhaps do shadow work or just to realize and face things about ourselves that are unrealized. So now that you have an at-a-glance definition and the basic implications of what synchronicity can mean, I'm going to go into how to use synchronicity for inner work. All right, the first step I highly recommend, but you don't need to start doing the first step before you start doing the other steps that are more personal to yourself. So my advice is to familiarize yourself with archetypal symbols, generally speaking. Now you can look into the work of various Jungian authors who have made perhaps their own um, dream symbol dictionaries or just archetypal symbol dictionaries in general. You can look into the work of Jung himself, but you can also look at the things that Jung was studying when he came up with the idea of archetypes, which are various myths and religious texts and fairy tales throughout um, the course of time and in various cultures that didn't have any kind of communication with one another but yet came up with these similar figures in similar stories having similar meanings. So for example, we can look at the story of Hansel and Gretel and we can see that the old witch living in the hut in the woods see, that's made of gingerbread and trying to lure the children in, you know, has a particular archetypal meaning to it. And then we can also look at the tale of the Baba Yaga and we can see that those two characters are similar, the witch in Hansel and Gretel and the Baba Yaga. And so if we can notice that there's a similarity going on there, we can see, okay, what is the essence of what this story is trying to tell us about that archetype and perhaps there are some culturally laden meetings that are going to be different from culture to culture but there's almost like a core seed of what that archetype means and to really be able to grasp it it's best to familiarize yourself with many different fairy tales and myths and various um, works by people who have studied into these symbols before. 
All right, the second thing I recommend is to write down synchronicities as you experience them. Like for me personally, I know I experience a lot of different synchronicities throughout the day and it would be in my best interest if I actually wrote them down because I find later on that I just, I forget about them. And perhaps they have had, you know, important meaning to me that I have missed because I haven't written them down before. And I always find that if I'm in the process of like, let's say keeping a dream journal or just writing down these various instances, then I can better look back and see if there's a common pattern between all of these synchronicities that might be telling me something about myself that I didn't already know. Now if it's helpful you could like maybe carry around some post-it notes in your pocket or in your purse and like whenever they happen you know if you have a pen on hand just write them down and then save them for later and then you can maybe write them in a way that um, helps you make connections better later on in the day when you get a chance. Also, I alluded to this briefly already, but you can also mine your dreams for archetypal symbols that both have archetypal meaning and personal meaning. But you can also do this with your daydreams and your fantasies. So if you find that you have a recurrent daydream or fantasy, let's say about receiving some kind of award um, and like it's a lot of people are in the audience and they're appreciating you and that's the more conscious meaning of your daydream or fantasy that you're actually picking. What you'll notice is that the subconscious mind will fill in the blanks of a lot of the background details and some of that can be significant. You can mine those for archetypal symbols as well. So for example, if I have these fantasies and I've neglected to notice that perhaps this award ceremony keeps occurring in my old elementary school, you know, then I'm going to want to look at that for both collective symbolism and personal symbolism. So for example, on the collective side, what is a school archetypally speaking? Well, it's a place of self-betterment and a place of like intellectual stimulation. And then there's also more personal meanings there. Like perhaps maybe I personally felt underappreciated when I was in elementary school. And so that's the reason why this award ceremony is for seemingly no reason happening in that context next or one that I've had quite a lot are various different scenarios that have played out in um, an old apartment that I used to live in back when I was 20 and I had a lot of very significant events happen during that time period and a lot of personal traumas also occurred during that time and so what I find is if I'm like you know like let's say having some kind of daydream about some interaction I'm having with someone else, sometimes the backdrop will just default to being in that place. And you know, it, and for a long time I didn't really notice that this was the case, but then if I think about it, it's like, okay, well, what are my personal associations with that place and why am I linking those particular ideas or fantasies or whatever I want to achieve by having that daydream or fantasy? You know, how do those link back to that place? All right, and then the next step is once you have all of this material written down from various synchronicities that you've experienced throughout the day or throughout the week, and then also combined with your dream symbols and the backgrounds of your daydreams and fantasies and bringing all these things together and understanding the archetypal and personal meaning, start to notice that there's a narrative being woven between these things. And I spoke in my last video about the tarot and the tarot works in a very similar way. You have a series of cards set out and you're looking for the connections between those series of cards that kind of tell a personal story about you and give you insights about yourself. And tarot is one of those systems to kind of leverage synchronicity in our own favor and to kind of assume synchronicity in the meanings of the cards. And you can do this this with various synchronicities that you've experienced throughout the day and see if you put all of those things together if a cohesive narrative starts to emerge. And many times when these synchronicities will come up, especially a lot, is if you're at a particular fork in the road where you have to make a decision one way or the other. And oftentimes these synchronicities can lead us in whichever is the direction that would be best for us, like in terms of what is going to serve our personal expansion the most. And so consulting your journal of synchronicities and dream symbols and all of these other things, you know, can help you decide what 
you know, what path is going to be right for you to really flow with life. If you think about life as being a river and you want to catch the flow in a sense, you want to catch your own path the way that you're most naturally going, then you want to make sure that you're not choosing the direction where you're going to be swimming upstream. All right, so to give you a better idea of how this process works, I'm going to use an example of what actually happened to Carl Jung relative to one series of synchronicities he had. So it was over the course of like either one day or a day and a half. It was a very short period of time. And he experienced six different references to fish in very different contexts. So let's say that this situation had happened to me. So let's say that I had this dream that I was just eaten by a giant fish. And then I wake up and I get on the bus and I'm sitting next to a guy and he is wearing fish print pants that are really, really like standing out to me. And then I go and I'm walking to work and then I look down at the ground and there's a random dead fish in the middle of the road. And then I go into work and then for some reason fish is what's being served in the cafeteria for lunch. And then I come home and I turn on the television and there is a, for some reason, a documentary about the mating life of salmon. And so it's like all of these symbols kind of like piling up one on top of another where it's like, it's beyond pure chance, you know, where it's like, okay, maybe if it happened two or three times, it wouldn't be so synchronistic. It would be a little bit, but if it happens so many times, it's almost like um, the reality is kind of hitting your head over with this symbol. So what I would do next is I would take my journal or my post-it notes or wherever I keep this information and I would write down each of these particular scenarios and it could even be helpful to write down how you were feeling at the time or what you were thinking at the time. And so uh, and once I have those symbols written down, then I can mine them for archetypal meaning. So uh, for example, like if I'm thinking about various uh, mythologies or religious texts, something that pops to my mind right away is that Jesus fed a lot of people with fish. And so if we look at that as an archetypal symbol, you know, of somebody who is the son of God or, you know, somebody who represents divinity and a connection to the divine, you know, giving people uh, some kind of sustenance and him choosing fish to do that, you know, that could have some kind of archetypal meaning. So I would jot that down. Or if we look at uh, various symbologies relative to fish, and I had mentioned that water has a huge connotation of it being the emotions. And so fish in and of themselves have an archetypal meaning of being almost the contents of the unconscious mind and the contents of the emotions. And so that could be an archetypal meaning relative to, uh, to fish. So I would jot that down as well. Or if we think about the fact that fish often swim in schools, so it's like like fish swimming together, you know, so it could have some kind of archetypal meaning of like following the crowd. Or perhaps if we look at the dream where we've been eaten by a fish, you know, perhaps this can tell us something about feeling overwhelmed by our emotions, since uh, fish indeed are the uh, symbol of the emotional contents because they are something that lives in water and there's a flowing nature to them that shares that emotional element on an archetypal level. Or we can look specifically at the symbol of the fish in the dream devouring us and we can think about, okay, if fish are meant to archetypally represent emotions and the contents of the unconscious mind. Perhaps there is some element that's now unconscious to me that feels so overwhelming and devouring that I've manifested this dream. Or perhaps if I look at the meaning of finding a dead fish, you know, perhaps in a sense it's like a, alluding to some kind of numbness I feel in my emotions, a feeling like there's some part of me that has died in some way. And so you would write down all of these potential meanings as well. And so that way you're kind of keeping like a bunch of notes about what something could possibly mean. Then I would look at my personal relationship to fish. Now I don't eat meat anymore, but I used to eat fish. Fish used to be my favorite food. And so that could be something that I remember, you know, like just having the association with fish uh, being tied to various different cuisines. Like I used to like a lot of like Asian cuisines that would include like raw fish or, you know, things of the deep in general like eels. It could also have a personal meaning to me because I was married next to a koi pond or because I always enjoyed fishing and I, I've only gone fishing really maybe 
10 times collectively in my life, but those were always enjoyable experiences. And so if I look at these personal symbols, none of these really resonate with me personally, but let's say that I had one that really stood out as something that resonated with me, like the fact that I'm, I got married next to a koi pond. You know, so perhaps if I'm looking at the archetypal symbols, you know, and let's say that the fish that ate me in the dream was a giant koi, maybe it's like I'm feeling overwhelmed in my marriage. Or perhaps, you know, if I see the dead fish lying on the ground and that dead fish were a koi, then it would be like a symbol of like, oh, maybe I feel like my marriage is ending. Or perhaps marriage in itself could be an archetypal symbol if that's what the koi fish are meant to represent for me. And so perhaps it has something to do with a disunion within myself and thus alluding again to look inward and to integrate. And so ideally you'd want to do a process like this over the course of at least a few weeks and see if like throughout the time that you're experiencing these synchronicities and these symbols coming up, if there's a cohesive narrative that starts to emerge. And so if you find that these things are always centering around a particular aspect of your life, like for example, if you find a lot of archetypal symbols that have some meaning that relates back to work, then look at yourself and your relationship to work and see if there's some kind of issue that's maybe brandishing itself there and trying to show itself to you. And, you know, at that point, once you see that there's a cohesive narrative, you can use that narrative as a vehicle for looking inward and seeing if there's any aspects of yourself that you need to integrate internally and also to see if there are any decisions that you need to make externally that you've perhaps been putting off because of unconscious um, motivations or because of fear or because of many other different reasons. Anyway, that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. Also, I wanted to mention that I still have the, the, uh, the contest going on for winning two free hours of coaching for me, and I'm going to be leaving the details down in a comment below that I'll pin above, but basically you would have to sign up for content updates, you would have to share out one of my posts on Facebook, and then also sign up for my forum and create a thoughtful post. I also wanted to say thank you so much to my patrons. You guys keep me motivated and I really, really appreciate it. And anyway, that's all I have for you for now. And until next time, keep becoming more you.